the atheist philosopher David Stove, he said, atheism is a vice only the rich can enjoy. And there's a lot of truth to that statement because in the world today, if you have a world map of where the people are atheistic, you're going to find they are in the regions of the world where there's a lot of money. And that's not a coincidence. Even in the Quran, God points towards the people who are wealthy and their wealth takes them away from God. So whether it's our wealth, our status, our family lineage, something which we're proud of, these things, they take us away from the divine because they make us arrogant. They make us haughty. But the reality is that we will never truly be happy when we have all these material things. And a lot of people don't realize that even though they're drowning in wealth, they're drowning in status, in women, in traveling the world, in all these things. And even when they're drowning, they're not realizing what the solution is. I don't know why this cockerel is going crazy behind me, but uh, this is the third time I'm filming this video, so I'm going to carry on. So the other day I made a video about um, Brad Pitt leaving atheism, leaving for spiritualism. Today, I want to make a sort of review of a very famous celebrity here in Pakistan, probably the most famous actor alive today. His name is Hamza Ali Abbasi, and he made a shocking video yesterday, when, which went viral, in which he claimed that he was an atheist, and then he moved to the United States, and then he eventually came back to theism and then Islam. Here we go again. So. And the other one just joined in that direction. I'm not sure what's going on. So, you know, being from that sort of upper middle class background that Hamza's from, of course, you're more likely to be inclined towards atheism, feminism, liberalism, secularism, and all these types of isms, because you have material wealth, you have status, you have these types of things, you know? And one of the things that he spoke about in the video was, you know, when his survival was taken care of, he was like, well, what else do I need to do? <laughs> what do I do in life? The thing is, these things never make us happy, you know, having all this material wealth and status and women. And, and what's shocking as well is that Hamza said he's going to give up everything now. He's going to give up his acting career. He's going to and he's going to dedicate his life to God, which for me was so moving. Now, whenever someone makes a, a, a life changing decision like that, you obviously want to know what led to those decisions being made. So obviously the first decision is what led him away from atheism back to Islam or what led him into atheism in the first place. And what he basically says is that his answers, the, uh, the, uh, the questions that he had, they weren't answered. And because he didn't find satisfactory answers, he just fell into doubt. And this is, this is terrible because Historically, Muslims, we were never like this. We were never this anti-intellectual like we are today. If you look at our history, if you look at the giants like Ibn Taymiyyah, Ghazali, Ibn uh, you know, Razi, Ibn Haytham, great minds who were there to articulate Islam and articulate why we believe in God, why we believe the Prophet is a prophet, why we believe these things. And when they had an intellectual challenge, they took it on. They weren't just like, oh yeah, just ignore that, just focus on your prayer. No, we were actually dealing with those issues. So that's the first thing. The second thing is about why he is going now from where he is, being a very famous actor, very successful, moving into basically the realm of Dawah, just conveying Islam. And in the video he spoke about death, which is a taboo. And he points out that, you know, people don't want to talk about death. Death is inevitable, but no one wants to talk about it. And that's a tragedy. And, you know, he's saying, look, how long are you going to live? You can live 50 years, 40 years. And it's just this very short period of time. Eternity, when you think about it, is it's like an endless desert. And we're here for like a small, small, small token of time. So, of course, we should think about death. And of course, we should think about these things. And that is a catalyst. That was a catalyst in his life to make this life-changing decision to give up all of his fame and, and all this source of income with acting and, you know, the the sort of, I think in Pakistan they call it Lollywood. Bollywood in India and Hollywood in uh, Hollywood. Anyway, so give up all of that and just focus on God. And God makes a promise in the Quran. Verily in the remembrance of God do hearts find peace and he will find peace in God. 
And he will not, of course, find peace like other people haven't found peace in material things. What's the other thing I was going to cover? There was one more thing. Yes. When it comes to death, our perspective about death is that death is scary. Death is to be worried about. Let's avoid it. Let's bury dead people very far away from us. Let's, you know, um, cremate them and hide them. No. The Prophet taught us a different idea of death. He said, death to a believer is a gift. And that's phenomenal. That's a paradigm shift right there. It's a gift. For who though? A believer. Because this life is a life of pain and struggle and pain. <laughs> pain and struggle, that's what it is. You're either going through some good times and you're going to hit some hard times. You have health, then you're going to get sick. You're alive, you're going to die. You are young, you're going to get old. All these things happen to us, right? We have a blueprint of what we want in life and we have a reality, right? They never match. So death is a, is a way of going back to our beloved, going back to the creator who loves us more than our mothers love us. So for a believer, death is a gift. And of course, for a disbeliever, it is not a gift. It is something to be scared of because you've chosen this temporary life over the life of the hereafter. And, you know, when we think of intelligence, what do we think of? We think sometimes you think oh, someone's wealthy and they're intelligent. Yeah. Or someone's good at maths, good at physics, good at poetry, good at art. They're intelligent. Analytically, they can solve a particular problem. They're intelligent. They're wise. They're great. But that's not the Islamic paradigm. A man came up to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, who's the wisest of people? I mean, who's wise? The Prophet didn't say someone with an IQ of a certain level. He said, those who remember death frequently and they prepare for it with good deeds, those are the wisest. That's phenomenal when you think about it. Remember death uh, frequently and then they prepare for it. Now, what does death actually do? What does the reminder of death do? The Quran tells us that there's three ways that people make decisions. They make decisions based upon either their reason, which is very few people. They actually think about what they're doing in life. Either based upon their desires. I do what I want. Nike, just do it. Or thirdly, it's because of society, what their forefathers, what their nationality, what their system around them, their peers is telling them to do. So society, desires, and your reason. And these two obviously are not going to lead you to the straight path. And these are not the way that God wants us to live, to follow society, to follow our desires. God says, have you seen the one who's just following his uh, desire and he's made his desire into his God? Or the one who's just, you know, you tell him the truth and he's like, no, but our, our family, our ancestors, they didn't do this, right? So to follow our reason, when you remember death, it diminishes the impact of your society and your own desires. And it makes you think clearly, which is why even there was a recent study to do with agnostics. And there are two groups of agnostics and, you know, agnostics obviously like not too sure whether God exists and whatnot. And one group was reminded about death and the other group was not reminded about death. And then they redid the experiment in terms of what was their percentage belief in God. And the, what, the group that was reminded about death, they remembered, no, so they had a more uh, belief in God than the group that was not reminded about death. What changed? It wasn't the intellectual content that the two agnostic groups were actually given. It was the reminder about death. That was changing something. Yeah, I thought he was quiet for a while. That was changing something deep within them. Right? It was the reminder of death that was really waking them up. So when we are speaking to atheists as Muslims, or when atheists, like on this channel, there's quite a few of you guys, you guys need to think about death. And you guys need to realize it may be fun right now saying, oh yeah, religion's this, religion's that, God this, God that. I guarantee you, if you sit down on your own for an hour, you actually think about your mortality, about the nihilistic worldview that you actually subscribe to, you will come to realize, hang on a second, this is just a fad. I'm not really happy with this. I promise you, if you actually try this, if you actually think about how meaningless your life is, how there's no value, no morality, no ethics. There's, there's, a ba there's no basis for any of these things if God does not exist. And then you will come to realize, hang on, I need to at least take this question seriously. I'm not saying you're going to come definitely to the belief in God straight away. You will come to that if you are sincere. But it's not going to happen obviously straight away. But you will most definitely recognize that the belief in God is important. 
is an important question. Darwin himself, when he published The Origin, like I mentioned before, he believed in God. He believed in God until the last decade of his life. And what led him away from the belief in God was not Darwinian evolution. It was actually the problem of evil. However, even until the last weeks of his life, he was very interested in God. He was asking questions about God, even until the last couple of weeks of his life. He actually wrote a letter to a Christian professor who was writing something about God. And he, Darwin was asking him a question. At this time point, Darwin was super famous, right? But he's asking this Christian about, you know, something that he said about God. And this is literally a few weeks before he passed away. Uh, more information on this you can get in Nick Spencer's book, Darwin and God. So, on the minimum, on the minimum, guys, remember death. And at least you will see clearly. Anything good I have said is from God. Every mistake is from my own. Thank you for listening.